Some of the world's biggest golf names are teeing it up right here in our very own backyard. The annual 3M Open at TPC Twin Cities benefits not only the average golf fan, but Minnesota communities as well. And it's all truly just a labor of love. The Twins have been building some positive momentum in their last couple games, but just when things appear to be trending upward, the good old injury bug strikes again. UND's main sheet of ice is that NHL sized rink, but back in 2000, one when the Ralph Engelstead Arena was initially constructed, they built a secondary rink, and that rink is an Olympic-sized sheet that they use to prepare them for weekends like this one against St. Cloud. UND head coach Brad Berry had said earlier this week that his team is there to win championships and develop elite college athletes who go on to play in the National Hockey League. And he said, what do NHLers play on? NHL sized rinks, but conversely for St. Cloud State, that larger rink size provides an advantage for them, a benefit, giving them more time and space. Another season of St. Cloud State men's hockey means another season of ringside with Mick Hatton. I'm Anna Vaining, and we're going to be previewing every men's home hockey series here at the Brooks Center. Zach, you can just tell after watching that first period that this game means more. What is the fire like out there? We're going to be previewing what you need to know leading up to this weekend series. Welcome to Rinkside with Mick Hatton. I'm Anna Vaining. I'm going to give you a bunch of lakes and you're going to have to tell me if they're in Minnesota or if they're not. Yes or no. Fellows Lake. You said fellows? Fellows. Fellows Lake. Fellows Lake. I feel like if I don't know, I have to guess yes. So yes. <laughs> no, it's in Missouri. <laughs> right from the drop of the puck tonight here at the Brooks Center, it is playoff Hockey. We have two teams who are looking to make not just splashes, they're looking to make cannonballs per se here in the postseason. Western Michigan riding high, coming off of a sweep over the Miami University Red Hawks. The momentum in this hockey game says it all. We're all tied up here in the second period, but your team's leading in shots 25 to 12. So what's got to happen to take the lead? Fans of the purple and gold will be happy to hear that the Vikings were back on the practice field today for day two of OTAs. You have quite the iconic smile. There has to be a story behind that missing front tooth. The Gophers are two and a half weeks away from their home opener against Nebraska and toughness has been the name of the game both mentally and physically when trying to create this team's new identity. We had a couple of them. Uh, one was called the Fish House. Did you have a name for your house, Anna? <laughs> My house, I actually live in an apartment, but I just call it home. <laughs> Smart. Smart. Fair enough. Last year, October 1st, 2022, season opener at St. Thomas, you suffered that pretty scary hit, which was the onset of you missing that first month of your sophomore year. Looking back at that time when you couldn't play, just how grateful are you now for your working body that allows you to play this game that you love so much? That month when I was dealing with the symptoms after the concussion, it just made me realize how lucky I had been. Well, this place might look a little empty right now, but it won't be empty this weekend when the University of North Dakota Fighting Hawks come to town to take on the St. Cloud State Huskies. It's the two top teams in the NCHC. 40 years in the broadcast booth as the TV voice of the Minnesota Twins, Dick is a 1978 St. Cloud State graduate and retires from the Twins broadcast booth after four decades. I spoke with Mr. Bramer earlier this week and he paralleled his time at SCSU to a toddler just learning how to ride a trike, which eventually set the foundation for his lengthy professional career. Tanner, you're an Elko native. You scored in your home state. Walk me through the emotion of tonight's game for you. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, obviously it's great being back in Minnesota. I love being here. So um, when we get to play these teams, it's always super fun and to get a 10 like that's pretty special. And the pace of play tonight was pretty intense. It was almost like a game of tag. What are you taking from tonight's game and carrying on in tomorrow nights? Yeah, I think there's some good. Conference shakeups are in full swing on a national scale, but one thing is for certain. The NCHC is stronger and poised to be bigger than ever next season. Minnesota United hosted an international friendly here at Allianz Field. It was a team from Germany who came all the way down to St. Paul. Coach, this was a scoreless game after the first period. Now a three goal lead. Where is all of this juice coming from? We've really been committed to a quick transition game. And as we both know, Lawson Ice Arena is not the easiest barn to play in. What kind of A game does St. Cloud State really have to bring? I'm here with Jake Middleton and Jake, I'm going to give you a series of red flags and green flags and you're going to have to tell me which is which. First up, 
eating pineapple on pizza, is that a red flag or a green flag? Red flag. I'm here with fifth year forward Addie Scribner, and Addie, the effort has been on full display tonight. How do you stick with it in this final 20? Yeah, we're super excited to play and just to honor our seniors. UND senior forward and Captain Reese Gaber is the proud owner of a hamster named Sammy, and she has been on quite the journey. Funny story, Jim and Gino. I talked to Reese at NCHC Media Day about Sammy, and there was a whole ordeal where she went missing for three weeks, but in actuality, a few of his teammates had kidnapped her. After a ransom, Sammy was returned to her rightful owner. The story's crazy, and I'm still a bit confused myself, but at least Sammy and Reese were reunited. Guys, this has very little to do with hockey, but we just had to get Sammy on our broadcast. <laughs> yes, yes, it was very cute. And like you said, it doesn't have to do much with the game, but all right. <laughs> I thought that was fantastic material. <laughs> yeah, that's she, Anna digs for stories. You cannot <laughs> deny her that. And now it's time for our big crunch. And remember, guys, this one's worth two points with LeBron James setting the all-time NBA scoring record. There's not many boxes for him to check in his career. So is he the greatest player of all time, or does someone else hold that spot? Thomas, you can go first. What do you think? Now jumping onto the basketball court, this weekend is a special one, marking the 25th anniversary of the Minnesota Lynx franchise. Tonight, the team hosts Indiana at Target Center to kick off the festivities. Lynx legends will be in attendance tonight, including their all 25 team who will be honored in a post game ceremony. The history was made over the weekend with a program best for the St. Cloud State women's soccer team. Breaking boundaries, the ladies have reached the highest 10 game start in SCSU women's soccer history. Dalvin Cook's time as a Viking has ended. The team confirmed today they have released the running back, ending his six year tenure with the organization. A tough blow to the lineup as the Twins' run production has been good over the past couple of games. Kyle Farmer in the lineup tonight for Correa, starting at shortstop, and Donovan Solano in as the team's designated hitter. The Twins are looking for their third straight win tonight at Target Field. First pitch at 7 o'clock. We'll have an update on Twins and Guardians tonight on Sports Now. After countless delays, a surgery date was set. The night before filled the Inga home with prayers, love, and the possibility of those moments being forever goodbye. My daughters had come over and you know, family had come over at different times, and I just didn't want it to be goodbye. And I wanted to make sure that the people that I loved so much that they knew. He gave me and my sister a card, and just reading the card, I lost it. It was just him expressing his love and his faith. But they made a really nice uh, book for me, Bible verses that we had read together. They said, hey, Dad, you know what? You're going to be good. Well, we're, you can read those when you get up. Those Bible verses were pillars of hope for RJ as he faced his life-altering procedure in the midst of the pandemic, a lone soldier entering the battle.